Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to our service of worship here at Union Church. I'm sorry, uh, Carmen Greece United Church of Christ. I'm almost awake. Uh, so glad to see all of you, no matter who you are, no matter where you are in life's journey. You are welcome with us here uh, at Carmen Greece UCC. Uh, we're going to begin today with just a little bit of centering music to give everybody a chance to do what we all need to do, which is to leave as much as we can at the door to be centered and present here. And I'll tell you what, in this service today, let's call to mind also those things that we can't exactly leave at the door. That are sitting with us in the pews and, and are with us in the pulpit because I'm, I'm in it too. And in this service today, you'll have an opportunity to lay those at the Lord's feet. So as we uh, come in, worship now, and we take this moment to, to meditate musically, uh, I invite you, open your heart, open your mind, and be ready to receive what it is that you want to ask for this morning. Join me now in our call to worship. Let us reach out with heart and soul to the Lord. O Lord our God, in you we place our trust. Let us ask the Lord to lead us. Help us, O Lord, to walk the path we should take. Lead us in your truth, O God. And we shall rejoice in your love and goodness forever. Amen. Amen. Our, op our opening hymn now is number 43, Love Divine, All Love is Excelling.
come now to the blessing of our gifts, uh, we take a moment on every Sunday morning. Uh, I did change the order a little bit the, for today, you guys. Uh, we take a moment every uh, Sunday morning to bless all the various gifts that, that you guys bring in, whether they're uh, financial or gifts of time and talent and expertise. Uh, thank you so much for all that you do to fill this place up. So let's take a moment now and bless all of these gifts together. Gracious God, you give us both the desire to serve you and the strength to carry it out. Your love for us never fails, no matter what we are going through. We offer our gifts with thanksgiving in our hearts for all you do for us. Receive our gifts, O God, and bless them, we pray. May they speed the coming of your kingdom in our community. Amen. Spirit, we share in the endless compassion and complete joy of God. In unity, we together embrace the consolation from love that we encounter in this place and in each other. This is the same mind, the same spirit, and the same love that are in our Lord Jesus. together. Lord Jesus, you accepted suffering with a glad heart. You emptied yourself, humbled yourself, and became obedient unto God all the way to death. We want to follow in your footsteps, but yours is a hard road. Fill us, we pray, with the same strength that enabled you to persevere to the end. Amen. Good morning. This morning's <clears throat> Hebrew lesson is from Ezekiel, chapter 18, verses 26 through 32. When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness, they have committed and do what is lawful and right. They shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? <clears throat> Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me. And get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. 
Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. For the word of God in scripture. Thanks be to God. This morning's epistle is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. Imitating God's humility. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father, shining as lights in the world. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure for the word of God among us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our reading now from the Gospel, a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 21, and I'll read verses 28 through 31. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But later, he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. And Jesus answered, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For the word of God within us. Praise to you, O Christ. We are making our journey through this crazy experiment, so casually called life. Think of the sum total of all your experiences, the, the aggregate of the accumulated wisdom and knowledge that that you've that you've gained over a lifetime and more and then realize that you know all of us together we've put our heads together and we've quite carelessly named the totality of this indescribable phenomenon life what what's what's all this that you've done oh that's that's my life you're, you're allowed to laugh. This is okay. And, and how, how is it that you've done all this? I don't know. I'm living. I tell you, it's, it's like we're gravely underestimating what we're doing here. Life is for the living, they say. But it's not for the faint of heart. We're making our way in the world. A world full of love and joy and beauty and a world also full of calamity 
and hatred and despair. This, uh, this marginally sane thing that we're all doing here is going to have moments when it builds us up and moments when it tears us down. Life can fill you and it can empty you. But no matter what it happens to be doing with you at any given moment, it's teaching you. Experience, as they say, is the greatest teacher. There's no substitute for it. There is nothing that anyone could say or, or put into words or, or any other medium for that matter that can teach us more fully and more perfectly than sitting and watching the wind waving the branches of a tree. Or one of those nights when you get that 3 a.m. phone call. No one can do better than that. There are no words or, or anything else that can produce in your memory and in your psyche the results that simply living through things can and do produce. The greatest sonnets ever written cannot approximate the experience of love. The greatest music cannot convey the depth of loss and grief to someone who has not known it experientially. Rather, what sonnets and symphonies do is they put into words and vibrations things that all of us know already, things that our experiences have taught us. Poets and composers and, and artists of all kinds, they just have a knack for translating the movements of our spirits into their chosen medium. The passage of scripture that we're considering uh, from Philippians chapter two, which was Sheila read for us, uh, is known as the Christ hymn. The hymn. Uh, it's a poem, a song, a piece of art. The writer started with something deep, something that experience taught her. And then she channeled that into those words. And if she's done her job well, then uh, what she has channeled here will be something that life experience is teaching all of us all the time. Okay, okay, but the scripture is about Christ, isn't it? Isn't it just teaching us about him? Isn't that all it is? No, no, no. Oh, contraire. The journey of the Christ through this life is the same journey that all of us are taking. The path that Jesus walked is the same one that each and all of us find ourselves on right now. For there is no other path that can be taken. The words of this passage, then, touch upon something universally experienced and universally known. You already know what I'm about to say. You know it as well as you know yourself, because this has been your experience too. It belongs to you as much as it belonged to Jesus. The Christ, the Messiah, came into the world to be formed by suffering. And you share this with him, and it brings all of us together. You too are here to be formed by suffering. It's the only path there is. You too are here to acquire the knowledge that can be gained only by contrast. You and Jesus have learned and are learning joy through pain. You're learning and you've learned love through hate and apathy. You've learned light through experiences of profound darkness. You've learned nobility through obedience. You've come to understand that summiting mountains requires that you climb out of deep valleys. So today, if you are presently walking through pain, I want you to know something. I want you to know that by it, by that very pain, you are being shown joy. 
if you are journeying through darkness today. Know that by it, you are being shown true and everlasting light. If you are mired in conflict within or without, know that by it, you are being taught peace at a depth of your soul, a peace that you will never relinquish once you obtain it, not through a thousand lifetimes, for it was too hard one to ever let go. I want you to know today that life is more than living. It's learning. And know that our great teacher, the one who leads and sustains us through every single experience, is God, who attends us by the Holy Spirit. You and Jesus are not that different in this way. Jesus had to enter Spirit's classroom just as we have had to do. But he didn't walk through it alone, and neither do you. Just like him, each and all of us are held in the palm of God's hand, and we're endowed by the, the Spirit of God with all the strength and all the resource that we would ever need for this journey. Today, be encouraged in Christ. Share in the spirit that moves among us. Receive the compassion and empathy of God and be consoled by that love that walked with Jesus in life, through death, and into the glory of God. Amen. And thanks be to God. We come now to the prayers of the people. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Well, we'd like to begin with, uh, with joys, but uh, there, there were none submitted today. And I feel like it's been that kind of week, hasn't it? Maybe that kind of couple of weeks. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, we come now together in prayer. And, you know, I want you to remember right now, this is the prayers of the people. So I'm leading them, but you're praying along with me. And we're praying for each other, and we're praying for ourselves all at the same time. So as we pray, join your faith with mine as we lift up these prayers together. Uh, I think this is public knowledge, pretty sure. Uh, Mary's husband, Paul, had a fall this week and uh, ended up in emergency, had to have emergency uh, surgery, and uh, it was a, a success. I uh, was able to uh, go visit him, and uh, he's in good spirits, so is Mary. Uh, Paul's already up walking, so it's, it's, it's going well. Uh, but we're going to continue to pray for uh, Paul's recovery and uh, Mary's sanity uh, during this. So, uh, gracious God, we, we lift up uh, Paul and Mary to you, knowing that, that you're way ahead of us. Thank you for seeing them through this, this moment. We pray that as you have just made this as easy as it could possibly be, that you would continue to do that for them. And we know that you are. In your mercy, Lord. Yes, Hear our prayer. Uh, and then prayers for uh, Dennis, who uh, is ill. Gracious God, we, we lift up Dennis to you. And, and we just ask that uh, whatever he's going through today, that you would be with him in body, mind, and heart. Pray that you would grant him grace, rest, and healing. In your mercy, Lord, yeah. hear our prayer. Uh, and then finally, we have some prayers for folks who are under stress. 
for Matthew, Nicole, Gary, and Natalie. And uh, let's go ahead and add ourselves to this list. I think we're under some stress too. Let us pray. Gracious God, we, we lift up those who are dealing with inordinate amounts of stress today. We think especially of those who we've named, and we're thinking now also of, of others who uh, find themselves in, in, in similar places. We, we lift all those folks up to you. And we ask that you would make available to them, as we know that you are already doing, the resources of your heavenly kingdom. That you would minister unto them that peace that only you can give, that passeth all understanding. That you would be for them living love, that you would be for them light in the midst of whatever darkness they may be going through, whatever darkness they may be carrying with them, that you would drive it out with the light of your love and of your glory, we pray. Grant each one that they might know the rest and the bliss of your holy presence. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. And now we pray together with the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So this being the, uh, the first Sunday of the month, we're going to transition now into a time at the Lord's table. As we do so, our communion hymn is number 347, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ.
we come because we accept a great gift that has been given to us, the gift of union with God. And as we come, we enter into that union once more.
here at this table with these elements and, and with us as we receive them. But we ask that whatever it is, whatever that mystery is, that you would accomplish it for us right now. That you would make these elements be for us the strength for this great journey that we have set upon. And that you would be with us as we, we receive them. That you would enable us to receive into our bodies, our minds, and our spirits that very strength that you long to give us. May it be so now, according to your will, we pray. Uh, at this time, the elements will be distributed. Uh, we ask that you hold each one until we will be all been served, and then we will partake. Closing in now is number 243, Great is Your Faithfulness. 
Join me now in our benediction. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Be filled with the same spirit and be consoled by the same love that lifted him up. Christ Jesus strengthens us and encourages us. Now our service is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us again today, and have a good rest of your day. Mm -hmm.